So we're going to kind of switch it up from Native Americans to ants in, in Mexico. So um, the title of my paper is Modeling Environmental Predictors of Azteca and Stabilis in the Coffee Agar Ecosystem. Um, the picture you see is a picture of my study organism, which is Azteca and Stabilis. It's an arboreal ant that tends hemipterm insects, um, also known as scale insects. And this ant is found in the agro, agricultural ecosystems or agroecosystems of Chiapas, Mexico. Um, and this is a picture of the scale insects. Uh, the scale insects colonize coffee plants and feed off of them. And um, the ant will protect them and kind of take care of them. And in return, it will receive a uh, honeydew, which it consumes. So the importance of this ant in the agroecosystems of uh, coffee in Mexico is that the, the ecological system that it's involved in can confer biological pest control to the farm. Um, this occurs through a number of ways. Um, one of the ways is through the white halo fungus, which attacks the scale insects. Um, but this only happens when there are large colonies of scale insects, which can only happen when the ants take care of them. So the ants actually, their presence will uh, promote the presence of the white halo fungus. And the white halo fungus also preys on the coffee rust, which is a serious pest of uh, coffee worldwide. Um, and one of the reasons that my advisor thinks that um, this pest has not been very strong in uh, this area of the world is because of the, these relationships uh, involving the ant and the scale, et cetera. So these relationships can create a special spatial signature in the farm um, known as self-organization, specifically uh, a power law spatial distribution meaning that the clusters of ant nests on the farm, which you can see in B right here, um, are the size distribution of these clusters can be described by a power law. Um, there's been a lot of literature regarding this. This is also known as endogenous forces within an ecological system. Um, so, the mechanisms within the system control the spatial distribution of the nest. This can include uh, when the nest needs to expand, if the nest can be influenced by the density of nests around it, or when there's a high nest density, uh, forces such as the white halo fungus, or a kind of fly called the forward fly, which preys on higher density nest clusters, will cause a, a very dense uh, nest cluster to contract. So these forces are, are all within the system of relationships. So this leads me to my question for uh, the paper and my research thesis is whether the other, other environmental forces in addition or rather than the endogenous forces may influence the distribution of Azteca nests. Uh, these are also known as exogenous forces. Uh, these could be topographical, such as elevation, uh, hill aspect, or related to it, such as the topographical wetness, or the uh, tree richness or tree density, which are outside of the system of relationships, which I described earlier. So I use GIS to investigate this question And I create a species distribution model using exogenous forces as predictors to see if they had a significant influence on the distribution of ants in a farm. So my model construction. I started out with point data of all the trees within two plots in Mexico. There, um, I've been working with a lab that had a 45 hectare plot in an organic farm in Mexico. And I, was, I used their data uh, from the past 10 years, but I only looked at one year for this paper. 
And I also made another plot in a conventional farm, also in Mexico, which was nearby. And I created a cens I census all of the trees within the farm, and I recorded what species it was and whether it had a presence or absence of Azteca. I used this point data layer to create a grid of either the both the presence and absence of Azteca and the abundance of Azteca. So I basically made two different types of models. Uh, one of the abundance of Azteca and one of presence absence. I created a 20 meter spatial, uh, res resolution grid of the two farms. And then I also used a digital elevation model to create uh, exogenous predictor variables. I also used my census data to create um, tree-related variables like tree richness and tree density. And then from this, I made two different models. I used a, I used a GLM to model either the abundance or the presence-absence, GLM standing for a generalized linear model. Uh, for the presence-absence model, I used a logistical regression I, for the link. And for the abundance, I used a negative binomial regression, which is good for describing uh, over-dispersed abundance data which, with excess zeros, which basically means there are a lot of trees with nothing in them. To fit the model, I used a backward stepping procedure where I started out with all the possible predictor variables, and I removed ones that did not have a significant influence. So the results of my model um, you can see from the R squared, or it's called pseudo R squared here, for various reasons, um, that they aren't very good. They're not very good fits. But throughout, the significant predictors have been elevation, along with um, some other predictors as well. And then you can see here the abundance predict prediction. Um, on the left is the actual um, abundance that I measured, and on the right is the predicted. And then this is for the presence absence. The red is where there are Azteca nests in the 20 meter cell, and then the green is without. Um, one thing to note about this model is the logistical regression model, that is, is that it did a much better job predicting where ants are not rather than where they are. That's represented by the specificity if you can see here, there's three different um, percentages. And the middle is how, mu how much it was able to predict the absence correctly. So it was able to predict 84% of the absences in Finca Hamburgo, which is the conventional farm, and 100% of absences in Finca Yolanda. Uh, it should be noted that it predicted no ant ants in Finca Yolanda, so it's very, I mean, it obviously would have predicted it correctly all the absences, that is. So what, is, what do these preliminary results mean? Um, the poor fit of both of these models could indicate that the exogenous factors that I chose to study are not good predictors of where ant nests are distributed. Um, this could just mean that I need to explore transforming the predictor variables that I used or I might need to try other link functions for the generalized linear model. And also, I might be just looking at the system at the wrong spatial scale. Alternatively, this could also mean that the endogenous relationships, i.e. I, the, the um, ecological relationships between the ant and other um, parts of the agroecosystem, may play a more important role in determining where these nests are distributed than the, the environmental um, variables. So that's basically my, my paper. Um, this is part of a larger thesis that will be part of my graduate research thesis. So thank you for um, hearing me. And do you have any questions? Oh, I'd also like to acknowledge my advisors Yvette Perfecto, John Vandermeer, and Amy Bernicke helped me create the models, and my field assistants in Mexico, uh, Gustavo and Braulio. So thank you very much.
if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Thank you very much.